Hey there, it's Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. I recently picked up some fabulous finds at the thrift store. So come hang out with me while I make some new fall pumpkin crafts. So I started with this ceramic jack-o'-lantern. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just bright orange really isn't my jam at fall time. I love my neutrals. So I just cleaned it up a little bit. For this, I just used like a Clorox disinfecting wipe. Use warm soapy water, use rubbing alcohol, whatever, whatever you want. And then I just gave it a quick coat of black spray primer. I just went outside. Just something for my paint to adhere to. And then I came in with Folk Art Multi-Surface Metallic Paint in the color Antique Copper and a one inch flat paintbrush, and I gave a solid coat over the entire pumpkin. Now don't worry about brush strokes at all because we're gonna be going over this several times. This is just a base coat of that antique copper color. Although I will give you a little bit of a warning when you're painting around the jack-o'-lantern face, you wanna use strokes that go inward toward the openings, like the holes for the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So brush, upwards towards the bottom of the mouth and downwards towards the bottom the top of the mouth upwards towards the bottom of the eyes and downwards towards the top of the eyes if that makes sense and that's going to really help reduce the amount of pooling because you don't want globs of paint pooled up along the edges along that jack-o'-lantern face so I ended up doing one coat letting it dry and then doing a second coat and then it was time to kind of age and distress this so for this, I just used a piece of a dish sponge. You could easily use like crafting sponges and um, like sea sponges, but I just used a dish sponge because that's what I had. I get them in multi-packs at the dollar store and I just kind of trimmed the corners to round them a bit. And then I used folk art, folk art multi-surface metallic paint in copper. So the base coat was antique copper and now we're going in with copper, which is just a tad lighter. And then I just used a pouncing motion. So just... So just dab with that sponge all the way around the pumpkin. Now, I liked having those rounded corners cut off on the sponge just so I didn't have hard edges while I was pouncing, but it did make it a little tricky to get into like the grooves in the pumpkin. So for that, I just cut a smaller piece of dish sponge so that I could kind of get in like around the stem and the, the grooves of the pumpkin. And then, so this got a little wonky. So I mixed some gray chalk paint with the darker antique color paint, thinking that I would just use a pouncer brush and pounce that on. I really didn't like the look of it. So what I ended up doing is going back and adding a tad of black chalk paint into that mixture, as well as some of that darker antique copper paint in the well next to it. And then I just use another small piece of cut sponge here, I didn't go all the way over the whole pumpkin. I just did certain spots. So it's like some spots got more weathered or worn than others. So just kind of pick your pattern. What like You can use as much or as little as you want. You can use a little bit. You can use a lot. And then I also did the entire stem, covered the whole stem with that mixture. So just dab a little bit of that gray mixture with a little bit of that copper. And that seemed to work really well. And the nice thing is you can layer. So if you realize, oh, I got too much gray, you can add a little copper in to offset it or vice versa. But here's my finished age copper jack-o'-lantern. I think he's super cute. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. So next up is like this classic clear glass pumpkin. I feel like I always see them at the thrift store. And we're gonna go a little bit coastal, a little bit nautical on this one. So I went with my trusty 
sea glass spray paint that I've used on previous craft projects and I just cleaned up my pumpkin really well and we went outside and I just laid everything out. So you want to separate the container from the lid and our trusty puppy Teddy helped out with this a little bit, although once I shook that spray paint can, he was out of there. But I just layered a few light coats. So you do want to be very careful because this is a translucent paint, not an opaque paint. So you need very even coverage. So I do recommend super duper light coats, even if you just let them dry for like five minutes between each coat. I feel like that's better than, you know, do that. Do 10 of those coats instead of three thicker coats. You'll get you'll be much happier with the end result. And then I just let that dry and then I brought everything inside and I just pulled some sprigs of faux eucalyptus from my craft stash. I laid a base of that greenery in the bottom of the pumpkin. And then I just had some fairy lights left over from a few Christmases ago. I stuck the battery pack in the center so it was kind of hidden. And then I just spread out the fairy, they were kind of tangled. I just spread out the fairy lights throughout the pumpkin tossed a few more pieces of boxwood on top and I was in business. So here's a cute little pumpkin lantern that I love because it matches so well with my growing collection of glass jars that I have in our living room. So I have been eyeing these bunt pan pumpkin crafts on Pinterest for a couple of years now and I finally came across a copper pan in the thrift store that I couldn't pass up but I also knew that there was no way that I could paint this bunt pan with this beautiful copper finish. So I decided to come up with a damage free topper. So I started with a piece of scrap cardboard and I just cut out a circle. I very simply, I just traced a Gatorade bottle cap and use my heavy duty craft scissors, which are great for cutting cardboard, made a little circle. And that's the base of my topper that's going to go right on my cake pan. And then I used some kind of like a sage green ribbon. It's this was like a linen type ribbon. It was it's actually full disclosure. It's not even real ribbon. It's left over from like a duvet cover that I bought. And this was like what it was wrapped in. I was like, that's too pretty to throw away. So I kept it. And so I just cut two lengths and I dovetailed both ends with really sharp fabric scissors. Dovetails are super easy to cut. You just fold the ribbon in half and then cut at a 45 degree angle. And because my ribbon was so thick, it didn't quite lay right. I just grabbed my little mini heat press. I spritzed it a few times with a tiny bit of water and I just pressed that ribbon and that way it laid nice and smooth on top of my bunt pan. So the two sections each got folded into a V shape and that completely covered the cardboard circle. Add a little hot glue in the ribbon to maintain the V shape and then also hot glue the ribbon to the cardboard and then repeat that process on the other side. And then you're in business and you can continue to decorate your topper. So I just kept going. I have this like floral wire. It's like a very thin jute rope. It's from Michaels, but you could just use a thin jute rope as well. And I decided it already had a little bit of gold metallic in it, but I really wanted to amp that up a bit. So what I did is I just took some gold floral wire and I cut five pieces of it. Now in this section of the video, this looks a lot shorter than in real life. I made one and I realized this was way too short, isn't going to work. So I ended up redoing it. So cut yours longer than what I did in my video but I just took the five pieces of wire and I twisted it around that cord. And that way, one, it kind of bulked it up a little bit because I wanted it a little bit thicker. And two, it gave me a lot more control over bending this cord so I could turn it into a coil to make a pumpkin stem. So I just started by wrapping this cord around my finger you know, it's you want to follow a traditional pumpkin stem shape. So what you're going to do is make it wider at the base and narrower as you continue to reach the top of the stem. And then once you have the coil as large or small as you want, you can then cut off the end and then just hot glue the base of that coil right in place on top of that green ribbon. And then I just finished everything off with a scrappy bow. I cut these ribbons a little bit longer than I probably should have because I wasn't sure about the scale of what size bow I wanted with that stem. But this is very easy to make. You just lay three pieces of wide ribbon 
and three pieces of skinny ribbon. Any type will do. This is just a one and a half inch burlap type ribbon as well as some lace ribbon. I actually got this lace stuff from Dollar Tree. But use whatever you want, variety of textures, colors, whatever makes you happy. You lay the six pieces of ribbon together, pinch them in the center. And then I, you could use another piece of ribbon to hold it in the center. For this, I did something different and I took a piece of twine and I wrapped it around the center of the bow probably 15 or 20 times so that it was thicker like a piece of ribbon, but it was just twine. And then you just secure it in the back with a very simple double knot. Too easy. And then you flip it over and you want to fluff out the ribbon pieces and trim the ends to whatever length that you want. And so this is like, it's easier to start with longer pieces of ribbon that you then trim down a size. I know it's a bit wasteful, but that way you can get the exact size and scale of ribbon for your project that works. And then I just hot glued my bow in place right at the base of that pumpkin stem. And then to finish off the topper, it was a little bare still. So I just used some faux boxwood greenery for my craft stash. I just a tiny few little sprigs cut them and hot glued them right in place. And like I said, this is damage free. So here's my little hack. I use this poster mounting putty. I used to call it sticky tack when I was a kid, like teachers use it to hang posters in their classrooms or college students in dorm rooms. Just put a little bit of that on top of the cake pan and then set your topper in place. That way for the fall season, you have a cute little pumpkin piece of decor, but then for the rest of the year, you can still use your cake pan for baking treats and wonderful things like that. So there you have it, my little thrift store cake pan pumpkin craft. All right, I left this one in just for kicks and giggles because I think it turned out so horribly different than what I imagined. So I, another jack-o'-lantern, it's a ceramic jack-o'-lantern. I brought it in, I cleaned it up with some rubbing alcohol. I thought, oh, I can paint this white and then do black paint accents just like I do on like my faux enamelware projects. So in my recent videos, I've done like a Christmas pie pan and I did like a fall cupcake pan and I've painted faux enamelware finishes on lots of projects without any issue. And this one mm, did not... I don't love it, but I'm going to share it just because I think it's funny. So I just painted the whole pumpkin with white linen Rust-Oleum chalk paint, a couple coats of that. And then once I had complete coverage, I went back with my black folk art chalk paint, which this is my favorite combo for doing faux enamel wear finishes. And so I just like took my fine point paintbrush and I kind of outlined the face and I painted the stem and I, then I added some like weathered spots on the sides and I even painted the bottom and it just gave more skeleton vibes than farmhouse enamel vibes and I think I made two major faux pas here one the finish of my pumpkin is more rigid like ridged and wrinkled and I think I need something with a smoother surface also I think I would do better with a pumpkin bucket that had a rim at the top because then I could make that like classic enamel wear rim line. So I don't think this one, this craft may end up in the trash. Sorry, um, but I think I may try again with like a different pumpkin bucket or something like that. But I just thought I'd keep it in because I thought it was funny. But that's it. Those are my thrift store pumpkin crafts for this fall. I hope you enjoyed watching along with this video. Until next time, happy making.